in early October, some of the world's best fishing occurs at the Port Aransas jetties. And using some live mullet and a wire leader, you can bring in Spanish mackerel, redfish, and kingfish. And if you don't think it's good, just take a look at this feeding frenzy of redfish. Now this video is about how to catch, clean, and cook a king mackerel. And I have another video on catching kingfish using ribbon fish, but this one's more than just about catching a fish. This one's about bringing it in, cleaning it, cooking it, doing all of those things. Some people like to just go and catch and release fish, and that's okay. Some fish can handle that, but a kingfish, it's not very hardy, and it's going to die really easily and so if you're not used to fishing if you if you don't fish a lot then catching one the best thing to do is put it on ice and then don't waste it use it eat it cook it and eat it there are some people out there who want to ban fishing to keep people from fishing and then there's others who are very greedy and they take whatever they want and they don't follow rules and regulations but both of those are bad ideas the the best thing is to find a balance to follow the regulations that the texas parks and wildlife puts in place and then to take advantage of those if it says you can keep two kingfish then go and keep two kingfish but don't just waste them don't just kill them and just throw them in the trash do some with them be a good steward that's what God has called us to do is to take dominion of his creation and that means not just protecting all of it and, and not doing anything with it but he wants us to use it so this is one way you can do this and I hope you can learn from this film it's just some things about fishing and more than just how to catch a fish but how to clean it how to bring it in how to fillet it how to cook it just enjoy it in every way Well, now we got the kingfish. Let's go ahead and fillet it. And I'm just using a Rapala knife here. And you might notice if you're familiar with fillet knives, the Cutco fillet knife case there that I'm using to sharpen that Rapala knife with. And a Cutco knife, they have a good fillet knife, but um, I lost mine. So that's why I'm using that Rapala knife. But you'll see what I'm doing there. I'm just starting a cut across the side there right behind the pectoral fin I'm lifting that up and then I just go and I find the backbone and I just wiggle that knife up and down notice I lifted that fillet up and I'm just wiggling that knife up and down up and down just trying to stay in contact with that backbone as I slide the knife along and I go all the way down to the very end the caudal fin or the tail fin there and I cut all the way through and just lift that fillet up now and uh, Kingfish is actually really pretty easy to fillet. It's it's kind of hard to mess it up, but uh, getting the skin off that can be a little difficult. But again, we follow the same pattern there. Notice how I'm wiggling that knife. You can see it wiggling back and forth, up and down, and I'm moving along that skin, and I stay maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit less than that above the skin. So there's actually a little bit of meat left on the skin. One thing about kingfish, they can be a little bit unflavorful, have, have a fishy flavor to them because of their red muscle. And they have a lot of red muscle, and then the, the lighter colored muscle is what you want to eat. The red muscle, that's for stamina. The white muscle is for fast action, like bursts of speed. So kingfish, they have a lot of stamina. They um, can swim for long hours at fairly high speeds. That's one reason when you catch one, they make a big long run at first but um, then they eventually start to tire but you can see what I'm doing right now right along the middle there is where a lot of that red meat is and so I'm just gonna take that knife and slide it along there and cut that red meat out and just move it all the way on down there getting all that red meat out of there and if you have some pets that's something good for them to have um, and now what I'm gonna do is cut again at an angle and just start to cut those into some chunks and 
when I cook these I'll usually pan fry them. You can grill kingfish too but I'll usually pan fry it and I want it about a half an inch thick and thicker than that sometimes it cooks too slow and you end up drying it out or you don't cook it all the way uh, but it seems like about a half inch if you're gonna pan fry it that's a good thickness and so I just do that down both sides and you can see there I've got a little bit more red meat there's the rib cage actually right there that I'm removing and so I'll just continue along there cutting some nice chunks out and then of course I'll rinse that off with some fresh water later when you freeze fish if you aren't gonna eat it right away you can freeze it and I always freeze my fish in water so that keeps it from drying out so much and getting freezer burn so I'll put it in Ziploc bags or big glass jars and freeze that and one thing I like to do is I, I like to see what the kingfish have been eating and if their stomach is full then I'll go ahead and cut that out and I'm slicing the tip of the stomach off right there and I could tell there was a large fish inside here so I'm gonna pull that out cut that a little bit more and just pull that on out of there and actually this one had a large fish called an Atlantic bumper it looks like a menhaden but that's an Atlantic bumper actually right there and a lot of those are around the jetties in the fall and they're actually probably feeding on smaller fish like anchovies and uh, another interesting thing to do sometimes is to just take a little bit deeper look at a fish, see how it's designed, how it's made, and what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm going to get the lens out of the eye, so I just put the knife in there and cut right through the eye, and I apologize that seems kind of graphic to you, but um, might as well not waste this fish and get the most out of it, and you can see that little ball there, that's actually its lens, and they have a perfectly spherical ball for a lens and it's a pretty beautiful pretty amazing thing to see so now you're ready to cook your kingfish and you can see the ingredients I have here to pan fry them butter coconut oil eggs salt parmesan and breadcrumbs and then a ziploc bag there and so I'm gonna put those fish in some eggs and that'll get them so that the breadcrumbs will stick and I mix some breadcrumbs like maybe a three to one mixture of breadcrumbs and parmesan cheese and I'll put that together and you can see I have a young helper here zipping that bag up for me and then in that mixture just tumble that around shake it up good after you feel like the fish are covered sufficiently with the breadcrumb and parmesan cheese make sure you go ahead and turn your stovetop on to a medium heat and I use an iron skillet and I'll put a tablespoon or two of butter in there and for about every pound of fish that I have I'll put that much butter plus about a spoonful of coconut oil in there and then I'll let that melt and get nice and hot and then start putting the fish fillets in. Once you fill that pan up then you'll just let those fish cook for a few minutes and then lift one of them up and see if the bottom is browning on it and that's a good color right there that you would want and that tells you that that side's done and flip it over and get them all flipped over. 10 minutes is probably about all it'll take total. Five minutes on each side and then look at the bottom see if that's turned brown and you can go ahead and lift it up and you can always cut through it and make sure that it looks nice and evenly cooked all the way through and then you know it's done and that's it enjoy